Finding love is hard. Getting laid is pretty easy, but finding love isn't. Especially when you're looking for a certain demographic. Gay men tend to fall for straight men, straight men tend to like lesbians, and no one's really into trans people. That's not transphobia or anything, it's just when you buy a copy of Grand Theft Auto 5, you're a bit shocked when you remove the packaging to find the disc for San Andreas inside. It could have been a mistake, or the vendor knew exactly what they were doing. Today's video is no exception, as we follow two trans girls looking for love on the beaches of sunny Brighton, courtesy of everyone's favourite sellout, the BBC. So, girdle your loins and ready your net, we're on the hunt. Why the fuck have we started off with the fucking Marks and Spencers music? It is, look! I am gonna get dicked by copyright for playing that twice, but it is what it is. This is one of the reasons why the BBC pissed me off so much though. There's a set formula for their shows that they never deviate from. A couple of establishing shots while some popular music plays over the top to rein in the kids. It's fucking chewing gum. Next they'll have the subject of the video walking into shot saying hi to everyone like they weren't just asked to do it. Hi. <laughs> Ah, ah, what did I just say? Fucking hell, you expect me to think this is all super spontaneous and improvised? If that's the case, why is no one like, what the fuck are those cameras doing here? Are you filming me? Even the people in the background walk past like there's nothing going on. They do this all the fucking time too. Like in one of those property programs, the presenter will knock on the door and then it cuts to inside the fucking house as someone answers the door and acts all surprised the presenter's there. The camera is in your fucking house. You have to give them entry first, you know full fucking well what's going on. Fucking chewing gum. Claire and her friends want to see if they can meet some hot guys at the beach. Claire is the one wearing dark clothes, right? So she just entered the frame from the left and she is still on the left. So where's the fucking camera that filmed the previous shot? It's not there. And don't tell me it was zoomed in from way back. She was walking from left to right. Unless she adheres to an impossibly exact walking speed, you can't do it while zoomed in on her face from afar because one tiny motion from the cameraman would fuck it all up. So that means they staged this meeting twice. Let's see the background from the previous shot. Sand. Now let's go back. Where's the fucking sand? Where's the metal railing? Lies. It's all lies. Not a good start, BBC. I'm excited. I mean, there's probably a lot of cute guys out today. She said cute guys, BBC. Not a cross between Stone Cold Steve Austin and a rapist. Fucking hell, were all the good extras out on other jobs or something? Well, to be fair, this is BBC Three. They don't exactly make quality programming, you know? This is the best they have. This shit is their Downton Abbey. I feel like just scope out the area. Yeah, looking is always fun. Looking is always fun, Claire. Good job you've transitioned from a man to a woman, though. Otherwise, looking would be a fucking crime. It is a shame, though, isn't it? Claire passes like a motherfucker until you hear that voice. You can tell it's been altered, probably by hormones or something. Females to males normally get away with it, but with male to female, you can generally tell. It must be a right fucker for them to go through all of that to feel like a particular gender, but get a stark reminder that you're not every time you open your mouth. Of course, nothing's perfect, especially especially when it comes to transitioning, but it is a shame. It's the first time Claire has worn a bikini in public. First time wearing a bikini in public. Okay, that's cool. I'm yet to do that myself, so I can understand any apprehension where that's concerned. Is it really a good idea to have Claire stalking the beach looking for some D then? I mean, first time wearing a bikini in public suggests some of this shit is still quite new to her. Is it really a good idea to expose her to potential rejection and ridicule at the same time? I'd have thought it would be a process of baby steps. But the things some people will do to get on television and the producers of shows like this will just push you in the deep end whether you can swim or not. Fuck, I've just realised, this must be her first time wearing a bikini on national television too. Either she's being exploited by the BBC or they're peddling some bullshit and expecting the audience to believe it's true. Totally plausible either way. Whole lot of skin showing here, and Claire is rocking a healthy fucking six pack. Though I still wonder how many trans people would be confident stripping down and getting into the water, given how much focus they themselves put on their bodies, let alone doing it in front of a camera. So either Claire and her tranny mates are fucking confident, or this shit is fabricated, and none of this is their first time doing anything. And the guys seem to be paying attention. 
voiceover did actually say something just then, but the music was playing to show, hey, we're having a good time, and it's empowering. And it was way too loud to hear what was said. Could just be my speakers, or it could be yet more quality production. Anyway, I think she said, some guys seem to be paying attention, so hopefully, hopefully, we're getting to the fucking point of this video after being dragged through useless information and copious amounts of frolicking. <laughs> I'm Casey. I'm Claire. Casey? What kind of gay name? Here's a top tip for you, Claire. Don't date anyone named Casey. They'll end up being either an accountant or a serial killer. Such a shit name. His parents must have hated him the moment he was squeezed out. And you have to remember here, everyone acts differently when a camera's on them. Everyone, right? No exceptions. Otherwise, he would have been all... And they'd be necking under the pier within minutes. Until he learns her secret, obviously. Because that hasn't been mentioned yet. I'm not saying she should be all, Hi, I'm Claire. I'm a transsexual. But he did just say his name is Casey. So what have you got to lose? Nice to meet you. What kind of guys are you ladies into? Like, do you like the blonde surfer kind of guy? Skater dude? All right, dude. Rain it in on the archetypes, mate. You're describing dress sense more than anything. Oh my fuck, is he balding? He is, isn't he? That hairline is receding. Damn, named Casey. See, losing your hair and has the same front teeth as Bugs Bunny. Some people win the life lottery and some people just lose so fucking hard. Like, is it personality that gets you or is yeah, it like... Definitely. Claire is into personality. A fucking healthy choice in my books when there is a very real danger you potentially have a bigger dick than the guy you're chatting up. For me, that would have been a prime opportunity to say, guys who don't mind dating a trans girl. I mean, the pleasantries are over and Casey is getting down to brass tacks. Mentioning it any later than now is just wasting everyone's time. Come on, Claire, drop that bombshell. I want to see his face. Definitely personality. Yeah, if a guy is like really funny and makes me laugh and I can like be comfortable around him, it's a plus. Oh, that is such bullshit. It helps, I'm sure, but it's not the defining factor so many people make it out to be. Or we'd be putting less effort into our appearance and more into our sense of humour. And anyway, prolonged exposure to someone who constantly cracks jokes gradually evolves your feelings for them into This asshole doesn't take anything seriously. I wish they'd shut up. That's why I'm single anyway, but I'm a proper comedian at funerals. So not to be, like, forward or anything, but, like... Do you think we're cute? Wow, Claire, you are really nailing the woman thing. Just mentioned personality and humour, but brings it straight back to looks. She's not shallow, you see, but works on the assumption that he is. A set of tits and some long legs are all he wants, right? When are you going to mention this whole package comes complete with a penis? I'm assuming you've still got it because, well, why else would you be on a BBC3 show about trans people looking for love? And that's love, yeah? Not a quick knee trembler in a toilet cubicle. So when are you going to mention this? This key piece of information that is likely to be a motherfucking deal breaker. Most definitely. And me. Gorgeous. You ladies are gorgeous. Gorgeous, he says. He's almost in the trap. Soon, Casey, soon your dick will be in her mouth and you notice the ever-growing bulge in her bikini bottom and it will all come to light. But it's too late then. You'll think, oh shit, this is actually a dude. Ah oh, well, might as well carry on seeing as I'm gay now. That's the only way this can work now. We should hook up sometime, hang out, you know? Really? Yeah. Always here. Like, get our number. Short thing. And the phone numbers have been exchanged, as shown by this shot of Claire holding a phone. Thanks, BBC. I don't think I could have put that together on my own. Always got my back, haven't you? Fair enough, though. No doubt it's way easier to let him know of your previous disposition via text message. Of course, it will probably be met with complete radio silence, but that's what you get for going after someone who isn't into trans people. So do I just put you in here as beautiful? <laughs> Oh, you smooth bastard. These guys have already decided who's getting who, haven't they? That shit would normally be reserved for the walk home, you know? I get the blonde, you get the brunette. There were three trans girls though, weren't there? Let's have a look back. Oh shit, there was three of them. Oh, but I think only two are trans. The two covering their bottom half so you can't see the distinct outline of a schlong. Or maybe she is trans but went the whole hog. That's the kind of commitment you have to tip your hat to. Either way, she's not here, so I guess she's the smart one. <laughs> Of course. Okay. Yeah. Bye. So when the guys found out the girls were trans, 
things changed. Of course things fucking changed. Don't put this on the blokes. They were being misled. This whole thing has been fuck unethical so far, but no doubt it'll be made as though it's the guy's fault for not wanting to shag someone who used to be a man, and that's transphobic. The music will probably change too to show how oppressed she is because she can't get laid by a straight guy without omitting certain facts. That's it. Silence. Oh, no music at all. This shit must be serious. Like nothing from them again. In a lot of ways, I don't like telling a guy because once I tell him, it's like, oh, respect goes out the window. Or attraction goes out the window, darling. Don't get the two mixed up. But fuck, if losing respect bothers you, then why leave it so late to tell them? That's a sure way to get someone to think of you as a fucking liar, and it's difficult to respect one of them. At least if you mention it from the off, there's a good chance you'll retain them as a friend, but don't mention it and you just can't be trusted. And I know you're not looking for friendship, which is why it boggles my mind that you're trying it on with straight men and then act like it's a surprise when they're not into you. That's gotta be the first page of the transsexual manual, hasn't it? And why are we currently filming a fucking camera filming someone? Is this where all the television license money's going? Fuck you, BBC. Straight guys just can't get over you having the male parts. Aha! She still has a cock. I knew it. I fucking knew it. Look, Claire, yes, some guys are into it, but for others, it's not a case of getting over it. You can't get over something that when you look at it, it looks right back at you. You said the word yourself. Straight. As in straight man. As in straight man not into the peen. Don't get me wrong. Go for the conversion if that's your game. Just don't get upset when you get turned down, and you are gonna be turned down a lot if you insist on trawling the fucking beaches of Brighton for some strange. Once I had or get that surgery. I think it will change a lot for me because right now, you know, if I meet a straight guy and he doesn't know, like, you know, we can't get physical. I got most of that. Getting the surgery, blah, blah, good for you. I hope it all works out. But then what the fuck did she say? Something like, we can't give his a call? No subtitles on the original video either, so fuck knows. It must be some kind of trans language that I just don't have the capacity to understand. But still, there's so much focus on straight guys, I'm glad she acknowledges that her being trans makes her a write-off for many a straight man. But rather than find someone who's into trans women, she's gonna chop her dick off and try again. Seems a bit far for something that probably won't work really if i don't tell him like and then if he finds out like what do you mean if don't tell me there's a single part of your mind entertaining the thought that you can be with someone for the rest of your life without them knowing you used to be a bloke because if you do it isn't your member that you need slicing off it's your frontal fucking lobe you'd never get away with that talk about grounds for fucking divorce and just things get so complicated that you don't even <laughs> begin to I can't even, yeah, begin to explain. Don't worry, Claire. I got your back. Finding out your partner is something other than what they've been professing they are for fucking years is how people get murdered. Not because of your past, but because you've been making an ass out of them for ages, and it's basically a betrayal of trust. If you don't let a potential partner know of your dangling little friend, you're a trap. And nearly every creature on this spherical earth will chew through its own cartilage to break free of one, and then get really angry at whoever laid it. Or bleed out and die, which I guess is your aim. It's a predicament, sure, but it can be easily solved by not hunting those who require a genuine vagina when you don't have one. Well, there we go then. Another heart-wrenching story of someone who's made drastic changes to themselves and is shocked when other people don't want to fuck them. Thanks, BBC. I can always rely on you to produce the most retarded programming schedule known to man and woman. Thanks for watching, guys. Please consider becoming a patron to support this channel, have a direct line of contact with yours truly, and join us for our monthly game nights. The link is in the description, and remember, BBC stands for Broadcasting Bullshit Content.